another sunny day in early March and I decided to uh, come down here to um, Frame Crescent which is off of Washington Crescent go for a walk over near uh, Slipper Lake there's several ways for me to get to Slipper Lake in town and one of them is to drive down to this uh, town uh, lot where they put snow and stuff. So I park there and then walk. It's a little, means that I walk less in town and more actually in the bush or in a beautiful spot like this. So, so I've come down with the Jeep and parked it and now I'm on my way for a bit of a walk. And it is another gorgeous day, as you can see. And I am very happy to be out and about enjoying the scenery. You pretty much need a four by four uh, four wheel drive vehicle to get down to the parking spot because they don't keep the roadway plowed very well um, off of Washington. So, so I take advantage of the fact that I can do four wheel drive to bring me down to some place like this. So again, I'm utilizing the trail that the snowmobiles packed down for us. It's Sunday, so I expect to probably have a couple of snowmobiles pass me while I'm out walking on a beautiful day like today. I would imagine the snowmobilers want to be out there enjoying this sunshine and lovely packed trails for their Skidoos. Now this uh, trail here looks like somebody's been walking in there. This is where I would normally walk uh, in good weather or over to uh, the spots that I enjoy along the side of Slipper Lake, but I think I'll go this way. I haven't been this way in, oh gee, I think it's been a couple of years. Yeah, it's been a couple of years since I've been down here. The last time I came down here, there was a woman walking on this trail because it's in the summertime. It's uh, a little bit like an ATV trail a roadway, but she was walking in here and uh, a young bear started to chase her and she ran over to my Jeep because I just arrived and got out to take some photographs and she ran up and she said, there's a bear chasing me. So I said, well, get into my Jeep. And uh, she did. And uh, I didn't see the bear. So as far as I know, she wasn't imagining anything. And then uh, I took her out to her uh, home on Washington. So, um, but that was kind of an exciting little event to happen. <laughs> so I don't expect to see any bears this time of the year. Although, I wouldn't blame them for wanting to get out and play in the sunshine and the warm temperatures. Mama Bear wants to get her young ones out and to enjoy some lovely fresh air, get out of the den. I'd be doing that if I was a bear. In the summer and the fall, you can imagine this is a beautiful route right here. Lots of uh, hardwood bush, beautiful scenery, colored leaves. This is lovely. And uh, we're coming to the spot where people launch their boats onto Slipper Lake. And as you can see, uh, snowmobiles go out onto the lake here and there's very often uh, fishing huts out on the lake in the winter time. And I think I see some people out there Yep. I don't know if 
I can zoom in on that or not. There's some fishers on the lake, ice fishers. What a nice day to fish on the lake. So that's Slipper Lake. So we'll carry on down this snowmobile trail. I've walked across Slipper Lake once, right across the middle of it, just to see what was on the other side. It was pretty much the same as the side I was on previous, so. Pretty much, I guess the this is pretty much what we're gonna get all the way along this trail. These uh, trees along either side. I drove up here once so I could get to a little falls between um, uh, two of the lakes here, um, Elliot Lake and uh, I think it's Quirky Lake. There's a little falls runs between them and I wanted to see it so I drove out here with my Jeep in the summertime and I tried to get back there again a few months later but I think I took the wrong turn because the road forks in a few places and I didn't get there didn't get there so I finally gave up but so I have been out to the falls once I might manage to get out there again in the future we'll see but that's a very pretty spot. Quite a ways though. We're talking several kilometers. There's a stream heading out to the lake. What's not to like about this? <laughs> it's just so pretty in here and peaceful. I mean, am I gonna meet anybody out here walking? Probably not, unless there's somebody out here with a dog. Sometimes you meet up with people with their dogs. But for the most part, it's just a beautiful, peaceful place to walk and I love it. long climb up this road here and uh, just as I say I didn't expect to see anybody out here who comes running up behind me but a jogger so there she is jogging up the road she says this hill gives her heart rate up to where she wants it so that's good if I ever have to uh, move into an apartment building. I think that uh, this uh, Washington Crescent apartment area would be ideal for me because I would be still close to these wonderful trails. However, if I'm strong enough to hike these trails, there doesn't seem to be a hell of a lot of reason for moving into an apartment, is there? Um, no. <laughs> I can handle taking care of a house if I can handle all this hiking. Only problem with uh, owning a house and having to care for it is uh, sometimes the uh, time you have to spend taking care of the house takes away from your hiking time, so I guess that would be a reason. Oh, I just imagine this with yellow and red leaves all over the place. And Elliott Lake is just absolutely famous for red 
leaves in the uh, fall. The hills are just a blaze of red. So you can imagine what it's like in here. And of course the birch with their yellow as well. So, yep. If you love fall colors, Elliott Lake is definitely the place to be. The uh, shadows created at this time of day. It's uh, somewhere around 2.30, I believe. On the snow, it's really nice. I love that striped pattern it creates. Especially when the snow has been melted on top, so it's got that wonderful smoothness about it, like paper. Look at that. Aren't those marvelous shadows? They're so nicely defined. I love that. Mm -hmm. I adore the outdoors. <laughs> if that jogger comes back this way while I'm hiking, I'm going to ask her if she's ever gone as far as the falls on foot, because if she has, I probably could do it too. <laughs> And I'd love to do that sometime. So if I could just find my way there. I tried to do it one year. I tried walking it and uh, there was so much water in a few spots. I couldn't really navigate through it. With, so that's why I decided to drive in there with the Jeep so I could just drive through the puddles. And then uh, at one point you get to a point in the road where you can't drive because um, once you get to the falls, actually, you uh, can't go any further because uh, the road, uh, the bridge over it is just meant for snowmobiles, not uh, for heavier vehicles. So you kind of park there and then have to come back out the same way you go in. But uh, Frame Crescent goes a long way in this country. Um, there's some little lake, I think it's called Ten Mile Lake. This all uh, in the bush and there's no major roads that go to it. Yeah, the only way you can get to properties on it are, is by boat. So, um, I think people go from Elliott Lake to Ten Mile Lake uh, by water only. So. There's a wide open area here. Looks like some snowmobiles have gone off to the right. Uh, but the major tracks are this way, so I guess I'll continue this way. I don't know where the jogger's gone. There's another river. probably should have some sunglasses on. The uh, reflection off the snow now is quite bright. But I didn't bring any with me. So we'll just have to... Oh, you know what? It looks like maybe that snowmobile trail goes up through that opening there in the bush. That one that I wasn't going to take. That's a steep climb, <laughs> if it does go up there. That'll be fun. It is so warm here right now. I think I could be in shorts and t-shirt. It feels like it's 65 or 70 degrees. I know I have my coat on, but the warmth on my face just feels like it's got to be a warm enough for shirt sleeve. <laughs> Ah, it's beautiful. Just so sweetly warm and lovely. I've unzippered my coat. So, uh, that helps to get some of the cool air and whatever there is, although it's very warm, um, inside the coat. <laughs> yeah, it's just perfect. If I had a backpack to 
throw my coat into, I'd probably take it off and walk in my shirt sleeves. But I don't like carrying my coat, so I'll leave it on. I just climbed up a hill and I did take my coat off. <laughs> oh, I can't believe how warm it is. It is March. It's only a few weeks away from uh, spring, so I suppose I should be expecting it to get warm. So I've tied my uh, sleeves from my coat around my waist, hopefully, and done up one of the clasps on the coat to hold it in place. So uh, I should be okay. As you can see, there, when you don't have a backpack, you improvise. <laughs> Open area. I'm really surprised that um, a snowmobile or two hasn't passed me by now. Like, really, where are the snowmobilers today? Well, now I know it's this is a beaver pond because there you can see the tooth marks. Uh, trying to take down those two trees. Decided against it for some reason. So in there there's somewhere, probably a beaver lodge somewhere in there. Maybe over there where at the end where the trees are. One of the things I love about Elliott Lake is uh, these wonderful hills all around me probably stems from my youth growing up in the Caledon Hills, I think. And I thought I heard a snowmobile. Thought it might be coming this way, but there might be an intersection up ahead that they cross. I don't know. We'll see. Something to uh, investigate. Look at that beautiful cloud, perfect white in a beautiful blue sky. Isn't that lovely? those vehicles were that I heard. So here we come to a stop sign and a sign from where I just came, it says to Washington Crescent. So it says three kilometers. I guess that's how far I've walked back that way. And I guess the reason I'm hearing snowmobiles is because there's this route right here. So I've come to a T in the route and they go that way. And I'm curious if this meets up with uh, with the, like that way, I think it might meet up with the trail that's behind my house. Here come the snowmobilers now. I hear them coming. So I think I'll step back this way for a bit. There they go. And off they go. <laughs> oh, 
Well, that's what I've been hearing. I want to take this little side trail here because it looks like it might lead to the lake. I'm, I know from when I drove down this road, Rain Crescent, there were a few spots where um, it looked like people had set up camps on the lake. And uh, this sort of looks like it might be one of those spots. So, curious. And then I think I'll turn around and head back because uh, three kilometers is quite a distance to walk back. And, you know, I'm, uh, I'm not a young chick anymore that has all kinds of energy, so I better not overdo it. Oh, looky here. Oak leaves still on the tree. Don't see that very often at this time of the year. Gee. Those are very resistant to falling off, obviously. And uh, the landscape around here doesn't look flat enough to be lake. So I don't know what what's going on in here. It looks like there might be a gate up ahead, so I'm going to keep walking over there till I can get a better, closer look of, at it. But, oh, it's so pretty in here, eh? From a distance, I thought this might be a gate post, but as I get up closer, it looks almost like it's a ramp that probably some uh, ATV or uh, dirt bike riders created so they could... Uh, do some uh, hill climbing and dirt bike riding in here. And that's probably what this is. It's probably a big sand pit where they've been uh, riding their bikes around. It's certainly not lake. And as pretty as it is, I really should turn around and head back. So that's what I'll do.